Effective change agents also know the importance of addressing resistance to change. The first step is to identify who is resisting the change and why they aren't on board with it. Ask them what they are most concerned about and share their responses with the whole organization. Some of their concerns may help us make changes to the implementation plan. Try to answer the following questions. Are they resisting the uncertainty of change and not the change itself? Do they understand how their behavior impacts the change effort and whether it will be rewarded or punished? Do they have experience with failed change attempts, leaving them with a cynical view of change? Do they understand the purpose of the change and the benefits it's intended to create? In rare situations, we may need to negotiate with resistors to protect their interests and to be able to move forward with the change. For example, a powerful resistor may be asked to join the decision-making group so long as they encourage their own coalition, their colleagues and friends at work, to also commit to the change. They get to share their input in exchange for support. Once we've evaluated who resists and why, we can figure out how we want to respond. The textbook mentions eight tactics. I picked six to discuss here because I don't recommend manipulation and coercion. First, communicating the logic of a change can reduce employee resistance on two levels. It fights the effects of misinformation and poor communication. When employees have the facts up front and understand the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the change, they are less likely to resist it. Communication also helps persuade other people that change is needed and that it's needed quickly. Some organizations use information sessions like a town hall to ensure that information is accurate and to give stakeholders a voice in the process. The second strategy for overcoming resistance to change is to encourage employees to participate in the change process. Like certain types of pay plans, this can enhance their psychological ownership of the change. Before the change is made, resistors can be asked to participate in the decision-making process, assuming that they have the KSAOs needed for the decision. Keep in mind, though, that as we increase the size of the decision-making group, it lengthens the amount of time that is required to make that decision. And it can also introduce additional biases that can lead to a poor decision. When employees are not supported or committed to the change, they tend to resist it. Managers then need to make sure that employees have the resources they need to get the job done. Managers have to motivate them to change and inspire them to do things differently. When tensions are especially high, there may be a few options that could help. Some organizations use counseling and therapy or new skills training to reduce fear and anxiety among the employees. Sometimes a short paid leave of absence may help individuals adjust. We can also encourage the building of positive relationships, which can provide a buffer to the uncertainty of change. This includes managers, coworkers, and even HR professionals. They can all be a source of social support Two other ways that change agents can overcome resistance to change include the fairness of implementation and the selection process. The perceived fairness of a change matters. When people feel as though they haven't been included in the process or the outcomes aren't favorable for them, they may resist. The fairness of the procedure is especially important when people don't like the outcome. If the change negatively affects them, they're more likely to support it when they perceive the implementation process as consistent and fair. 
Research also suggests that the ability to easily accept and adapt to change is related to personality. Some people are better prepared for change than others. People who are emotionally stable, who have high core self-evaluations, who are willing to take risks, and who are flexible in their behavior tend to be more open and accepting of change. In organizations where change is a necessary part of the job, it may make sense to recruit and hire people who have these personality qualities. Now that you are more familiar with resistance to change and how to overcome it, in the next part of this lecture, we're going to cover four approaches to managing change. You can use these strategies to overcome resistance to change along with any one or more of these models.